We are speeddemosarchive.com, your premier source for high quality speedruns of all your favorite games. And we also have many here from speedrunslive.com, the place to go to for races of games of all shapes and sizes. <clears throat> Good luck, buddy. You'll need it. <laughs> Alright, count me down then. Um. <laughs> Alright, three, two, one, go. One, go. <laughs> one, go. Alright, so this is Kid Icarus. He plays this little guy here named Pit. It's kind of a play on, on Cupid, and he's a kid, and, he, and he's kind of like Icarus. Boom, Kid Icarus. So this first level is pretty straightforward. Taking a lot of hits doesn't really matter. Health becomes much more important later on though. A lot of people remember this as uh, the game they could never beat the first uh, couple stages of as a kid. It's really, really brutal. Um, just because it's naturally just a uh, vertical game and uh, with all these precise jumps and it's really easy to die, especially starting uh, around 1-2, where ice is introduced and you, just, you can just go flying off without ever expecting to. And these, uh, these refats are always a child favorite, childhood favorite. One, one down. One, one down. All right, you wanna explain, explain the yeah, hearts sure. and stuff? So in one, starting 1-2 one, in a speedrun route, um, you have to start making use of what the game calls the strength system. Uh, the way it works is, in several stages, there's a door in which Zeus appears. And by the time you get to him, you need to accumulate 10,000 points. Uh, this is the first level where a Zeus door is, well, there's technically one and one one, but um, you can't make use of that on your first uh, loop through the game. Basically, the way you can get points uh, the, the best way to get points is by killing enemies and collecting their precious, precious hearts. Uh, the ones, when you see uh, Jorf killing these smaller enemies, they'll be dropping small hearts. There are some which drop medium, kind of half hearts, and there are some which drop the big hearts. Those uh, are worth 100, 300, and 500 points respectively, and killing the enemies as well is worth the, that equal amount that their heart is worth. Um, by the time you, you get to Zeus, you need 10,000 points. In this stage, he's at the very end of the level, so you do have time, 
but naturally in a speed run you want to try and optimize it as much as possible and Dorf's doing a great job on that. Um, like those lines of four, you really want to try and uh, shoot down as quickly as possible and preferably in the same exact position so you can just collect all their stuff with one solid jump. We got a weird elevator here. Yeah. The game is actually kind of uh, glitchy in a way and uh, it'll do things that like, no matter how many times you play the game, it'll do things you've never, ever seen before. Those little ice platforms there are the ones that I was talking about before. It's actually, it's kind of funny, because while you're standing on them, um, you're walking around on them, it doesn't feel too weird until you try... There's Zeus. He's, He's apostrophe glad. glad to see us. Apostrophe glad. Um, but yeah, the ice in this game is funny, because when you jump off it, you basically can't change your jump uh, after you jump off of it. This guy's fake, don't worry about him. <laughs> <laughs> Just stuck right under him, yeah. Um, in a speed run, um, it actually kind of, in a way, well, sort of gets uh, easier as you go on just in terms of health usage. And the reason for that is, while there's that separate strength system we talked about, and the idea of strength is that you start with one strength, and each of those upgrades Zeus gives you makes your arrows do twice as much damage. So Jorf just got this, um, he just got uh, upgraded to two strength, so now his arrows do two instead of one. And later on in, um, uh, later on in the game, he'll be getting, uh, in 2-1, he'll two be getting one, yeah. the, the third strength, up, or the second strength upgrade to go to <coughs> three strength. How high can it go? It can go up to five. To five. All right, so I don't know what's going on in this world, but there's a bunch of birthday candles. So if it's anybody's birthday out there, these are for you. Um, one of the reasons World 1 is so hard is just because you are so limited on health. Um, the way you upgrade your health in this game is you have to, again, kill a bunch of enemies. And every, so, every certain amount of points, um, you'll get another kind of health increase. Like right now, he's got uh, seven, seven health max. And once he gets to the next level, which should be around maybe early World 2 in a speedrun, um, he'll double that size and uh, he'll be up to 15 health. But uh, in World 1, you're, the way you increase your health is, re is two ways, really, mainly. By um, either collecting these chalices littered throughout the level or dying and refreshing your health that way. Dying is, is sometimes a good option, but in uh, World 1, you really um, don't want to try, try not to death abuse until 1-4 if it's needed. Um, and there's no health uh, refresh between 1-2 and 2-1. So in a perfect world, um, you're navigating these really, really hard stages, um, trying to dodge as much as possible. And a lot of these enemies deal in the early stages um, deal between 1 and 2 damage. So that can potentially only be like four hits until you're dead. Gotta love that Reaper sound. Yeah. There's a, bit, there's a big sequence break coming up in this level that yeah. he's gonna try. Uh, it might take him several tries to get it, but you have to kind of glitch into a corner and then jump all in the corner. He's gonna death abuse because he's low on health. Yeah, I don't feel comfortable <laughs> half health. I'm finished though. <laughs> yeah, you also need health to do the boss at the end of this um, stage. Like, you need at least one health to do it like any quickly at all. <clears throat> So here it is, cross your finger. Ah, so close. <laughs> nice. nice. That was still passion and going the normal yeah. way. This saves like 40 seconds or something, at least. <laughs> every fourth stage of uh, every world is this gigantic maze of a fortress. And so typically in a, in a normal route, you'd have to navigate around. So here's the first boss.
Nice. Wow. That was that was very terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but, <coughs> so what you saw him do there is basically it's called crouch canceling. If he was just to uh, mash B as fast as he could, the arrows would come out very slow. But crouching. Yeah, that fast. Yeah, that fast. And the uh, crouching uh, refreshes it entirely. So you can technically um, shoot an arrow every third frame because the inputs would be you know button down button down button down um, and so you can just really spam arrows that way the only uh, limiting factor is that you can only have uh, two arrows on screen so you want to try and be close um, so here's the next the other level where uh, he's going for strength upgrades these rocks do I think three damage so they would more than pulverize him if they landed on him he's got one health left and it's a very difficult stage um, so he's just got to try and get to the uh, chalice in the midpoint or so. And these, like, enemies in this game are really, really hard to predict. Like, those dudes coming out of the bottom, they could just... Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> or the rocks. <laughs> stuff comes from above. Stuff comes from the bottom. Stuff comes from the sides. Yeah, like, there are, um, there are packs of enemies where they have their general Let's area say. where they appear. Yeah. Nice, um, but you can never predict like their exact pattern. Uh, it's different every time. <laughs> so a lot of these kills um, he's doing, and this game is, needs a lot of improvisation because like we were saying, it's not just about um, surviving. It's also about trying to kill these enemies as precisely as possible and uh, on these score stages so that you can um, move through the stages quickly while still uh, getting their hearts and killing them so that you can uh, have enough for Zeus who's waiting for you at the end. That was a good time to stop commentary. That little ditty was perfect. Um, let's see how yeah, that's good one that. <laughs> You might have noticed he jumped into the lava without taking damage. Um, the lava and like the overworld bushes that oh. look like they can do damage, um, they're on a global timer, I think. Yeah, yeah, 32 frames. Yeah, so they only do damage when the global timer passes. <clears throat> so that's 2-1. 2-2 two um, two -two is a really interesting stage. Jorf uh, discovered that you can actually wrap around to the other side of the level, so it looks kind of funky, and here you go. Easy trick, try it at home. <laughs> so you gotta be as close to the uh, uh, side of the screen as you can, a little far off as Dorf is here, so that you can uh, A, see what's coming, and B, uh, be able to shoot the enemies that come from the side of the screen quick, uh, easily. Yeah, this level's just a bunch of concentration and memorization. Mm -hmm. Um, the reason for this isn't just because it's hilarious, <laughs> it's actually, uh, um, it's mostly to uh, make the platforms that appear throughout the rest of the level. Yeah, along with these guys, they won't be able to hit me over here. Yeah, yeah since he's so far right, that guy won't be able to touch him. Um, one interesting thing about this game uh, that we actually just found, uh, well, a few months ago, <laughs> but recently in terms of the Kid Icarus, uh, timeline is that uh, these uh, groups of four enemies share the same RAM addresses as the platforms. So you can see here there's one dude left. At some point in these platforms he'll despawn so that he can uh, make, m make room in the memory for one of the platforms. Uh, what the consequence of that is that you can see he's kind of bobbing up and down. You can see he disappeared there. You can see uh, the enemy was bobbing up and down in the air. When his appropriate platform appears, that platform is going to remember his speed that the enemy last left with. So while the platform always spawns at the same position, um, if the enemy was last going down when the platform appears, the platform is going to um, go down for a little bit before going up, and if the enemy was going up, the platform will be straight going up. And the same is true for when a platform replaces another platform. For example, that last platform we saw on the stage um, went down for a little bit before going up. And that's because it's uh, the, the RAM address of the thing it replaced was most recently going down. 2-3 is one hard stage. Because yeah. um, you're very limited on health. You're very limited on health. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
You're very limited on health, so you want to try and start for, with a full, full bar. And uh, even then, throughout the whole stage, it's, it's going to be very precise. So Jorf again does another um, screen wrap here for the purposes of the platforms coming up. And these platform jumps are a lot more precise than what we saw in the previous level 2-2. Um, and he's got to make three very precise jumps. First of which is right. Nice, you're good. Nice. There are going to be two coming up as well, um, which uh, just add to the difficulty of the stage, in addition to all the enemies that are just trying to get you. Um, he does very precise jumps through that lava again, because if he just wadded through it, then um, it, he would be taking damage every 32 frames. So it's kind of a luck thing, just in terms of that uh, you're jumping through it as, mu as much as you can, and sometimes when you land in it, it'll hit you. Um, because you're on that 32 frame uh, interval and sometimes it won't. Um, so this part is like 2-2 in that you're trying to be as far to the right of the screen as possible to uh, dodge those do the water flying watermelons as Trump calls them uh, coming at you. And this is really the hardest part of the stage because it's two of those jumps in succession. No. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so Jorf is going to do another uh, screen wrap which he found the positioning for that one as well. Um, but yeah, those are extremely difficult. And worse yet, uh, those really um, are affected by that, those flying watermelons flying around. Because if you, in a, you, there can be a worst case scenario where the, <laughs> the, nice, the enemy um, is flying up when the platform appears, and so the platform immediately spawns just going straight up and you just can't make it. Um, those <laughs> banditos that are appearing as uh, <laughs> from before, there's a lot of stuff in this game which you actually never see in the speedruns, such as um, power-up rooms where you can survive harsh training and uh, collect a sweet reward. And uh, if you do that, like, if you do that, it's, it's this pretty cool upgrade usually. And um, you can go through the rest of the game, and it's, it's kind of one of the nicer ways the, uh, the game Give, where the game gives you something to try and make up for its extreme difficulty playing through. Really nice. That was a really good 2-3, so that's that. Um, and one of those uh, bandits, which you saw earlier, if they touch you, then they'll just take the item away from you instantly. You can't do anything about it. And they just kind of jump erratically around, so yeah. Um, so Jorf actually needs a lot of health for this uh, stage, potentially. Because he's going to be doing, <laughs> he's going to be doing another trick he found, and which actually isn't in the latest implementation of the task, in which um, he does this very interesting zip. <clears throat> it's pretty, it's related to the wall um, wraps. Ooh, <laughs> he went for a quickie there. It doesn't save <laughs> as much time as uh, the one you're about to see. <clears throat> but this one, similar to in one four, this stage is even bigger than uh, one four, and um, if you can, if we, if you can do this uh, wrap successfully, then you basically skip maybe like two-thirds of the level. I think it skips, it saves maybe, I think, 50 or so seconds real time. Nice. Yeah, That's it. <laughs> this boss is honestly uh, one of my favorite bosses in an NES game. And the reason for that is he, he has a very deterministic pattern, but he's still extremely difficult because um, you need to spam arrows like you did on 1-4, but he's jumping up and down and up and down in that deterministic and pattern. So you need to be crouch canceling in the air like crazy. Um, and you know exactly where he's going to be, but it's still extremely difficult because you're jumping and he's hitting B down, B down, B down, B down. It's really hard. Also, he's got an extremely satisfying um, damage sound. <laughs> Nice. I'm dead. I'm actually oh. dead. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, I was afraid of that. <laughs> so, what, what is being attempted there is the health glitch. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna, you see it, you've seen it go wrong, and you'll, then you'll see it go right. But the idea is that um, <clears throat> if you finish a stage with zero, <laughs> with zero health, then you'll actually go to zero HP. Um, rather than obviously, if you usually did that, then you just die. Um, and uh, so the idea there is that you have a um, brief window in which, after you kill the boss, you can step in his lava, which finishes you. The game still thinks you've finished, but you're scrolling uh, down off the screen. And as long as the um, level actually finishes, like you killed the boss, but as long as the level actually finishes while you're scrolling down, then um, you'll continue on to 3-1 <laughs> with um, zero health. Um, and then you can actually, the benefit of that is that it's kind of a free health uh, refill because if you take damage at anything where uh, there's that 32 frame interval such as lava or such as the, these like weird jellyfish squid type things that you'll see in the next stage, then it'll refill your health from uh, zero back to full. <coughs> the dangerous thing, of course, is that if you take damage from something not on that 32 frame interval, even if it only does one health, then um, it'll kill you like anything else would. So you have to navigate the <coughs> early parts of 3-1 uh, with a lot of precision or else you'll die. And there are a lot of snakes and a lot of uh, flying loopy things, I think they're called columns, um, that will just, just want to obliterate you. So yeah, he, he, um, this is just one health instead of zero, but that's fine. We've got backup strats. <laughs> backup strats. <laughs> <laughs> so that is also a very successful way of refilling your health. <laughs> Clouds were very uh, delicately placed there, just for pit. <laughs> Um, so in terms of speedrun routing, um, we have been trying to figure out whether uh, the three strength which we've currently been using or getting a fourth bit of strength in this stage would be beneficial. Um, a three strength is definitely, it's, it's honestly, it's really, really close. And it, it's almost um, up to player preference. Um, three strength for sure is a lot more marathon safe. And um, just not only because getting the strength in this stage, those are the flying jellyfish squids by the way. Um, <laughs> Not only because uh, getting the strength upgrade in this level is extremely difficult, but also um, just because Pandora later on is extremely difficult and it kind of ends up the next turn. The idea of this game is that um, you're, like Dorf said, uh, you're this. Uh, kid angel pit who's uh, going up to navigating basically um, angel land I think it's called he went through the world one which was the underworld world two which was the uh, overworld yeah overworld yeah. and then world three here which is the sky world and um, he wants to ooh, <laughs> dang. he wants to hunt down and kill Medusa who captured the good goddess Palutena So yeah, those little flying jellyfish things, like I said, are on the 32 frame timer. So sometimes you'll just unexpectedly, um, or you'll sometimes take damage from them, sometimes you won't. The game gets really mean at this point with like reapers on one tile platforms mm -hmm. and like reapets spawning everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be seeing a very familiar enemy coming up in a moment here. Oh no, I'm a weakling. <laughs> You weakling! <laughs> <laughs> there they are. Kid Icarus only. You'll never see, me um, you'll never see uh, Metroid type, uh, I mean, enemies like that anyway. Um, this is actually developed by the same uh, designer and, and group, I think, as Metroid was. So, they're, it's a, actually, I think it's the exact same game engine. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Comedy. 
Angry, angry octopi. They're so angry. Oh, they're so fast. <laughs> They left their families behind. <clears throat> nice, so that was 3-2. 3-3 three, um, three, three has a very interesting application of that kind of enemy and uh, platform sharing the same uh, RAM address thing. Those, and <laughs> another death of these. Um, those four Metroids, um, because it's a group of four, this is a, another cycle, the beginning part of this level is a very cycle-based um, section. And so he's manipulating those guys, nice. Since they uh, both died when he uh, went to the right, that first elevator isn't exactly the position he wanted, and so is this one. Um, so he was able to make that jump without waiting for the cycle. So at all, like, you kind of have to kill enemies in such a way where the uh, platforms are beneficial to you. If you're questioning why he's dying at the beginning of like every stage, trying to actually go through these stages as fast as possible without getting hit is like incredibly hard. Yeah. So generally, it's faster to kill yourself rather than like try and skirt around a bunch of enemies throughout the stage. Yeah. <laughs> um, there is one more way of refilling your health I forgot to mention. There are these, I mean, you've been seeing throughout the game all these little side rooms which are useless. One which Zeus appeared, one which the dwarf guy called the weakling. Um, there are shops. Um, there are these ones where, like, there are a million pots and you just have to kind of guess which one um, has an item you want, or you have to do them in order to get the item at the end of the sequence uh, of thingies. And um, in some of the rooms, there are these yellow health pools, which uh, refill your health extremely. Oh, That's some yeah. lag right there. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's a lag bomb. Um, <laughs> there are some rooms which uh, fill your health extremely slowly. I think it's that same 32 frame. Uh, Thing, like one health every 32 frames and so uh, it's better to just die. Oh. Eggplant. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so Jerf's going for, a, this is probably, uh, along with 2-3, this is probably the hardest stage in the game. Um, it's just very, very long and difficult and then the boss at the end is extremely random. Um, so you really just want to come in with uh, full health or the, the two bars of health that dying gives you. Uh, these eggplant wizards are definitely another childhood favorite. Um, if you get hit by them, as Jorf did uh, purposely a, a minute ago, then they turn you into an eggplant. And the only way to get out of that eggplant mode is to find a uh, nurse somewhere in this gigantic stage, uh, which is, especially in this stage, extremely out of the way of the speedrun route. Um, so rather than that, you just want to not become eggplant. All these, these rooms with uh, the eight spawning enemies are extremely difficult because there's no real way to predict where they'll be. So sometimes, and the, the red ones, uh, the red like spinning deals there, do three damage, the blue ones do two. And like I, like, uh, I said before, Dorf only has 15 health to go off of. And Pandora I think does five. So it's really difficult if you go in with a uh, low amount of health. He has been uh, saving his hearts. The hearts, which you're feasting on by uh, killing enemies, not only give you that strength upgrade when you go into Zeus's room, but it's also the, actually the form of currency of the game. <laughs> um, the form of currency of the game. And uh, you have to, I think when you play this through normal, you just have to farm, farm, farm. Not only for currency, but also for uh, strength and for points to increase your health bar. Um, and so the, we've, we've leveled out this, or we've uh, routed out the hearts route so that you can definitely get that. Nice! You got the zip! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gave him a surprise. <laughs> and yeah, here's right. Pandora. So here's Pandora. He's, 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 like a, he's like one of those DVD player logos <laughs> that just bounces around the screen randomly. You never know where he's going. It, it was that? health. Oh, yeah, health. Yeah. <clears throat> Every single piece on screen just moves erratically and you can't predict it. You just have to make, make use of what he gives you and hope for the best. Like you really faked out Jorf real good there by <laughs> just doing a total 180. <clears throat> and one more hit will kill him. So you just have to like, you really just have to hope for the best. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, and if he goes in the top right like that, there's no way yeah. you can hit him. He's just up there. And this is the one, one of the most brutal bosses in a speedrun I know, period. <laughs> nice. That's it. Let's... And he got the, sh the little clone there as well. Yeah. All right, we're home for you now. Yeah. <clears throat> so this last stage is an auto-scroller, and it, it loops infinitely unless you kill 50 enemies, which isn't a problem. Fun uh, note that in the Japanese version, this stage is actually not an auto-scroller. You actually <coughs> move freely through the level. Uh, I don't really know why they changed it for the American version, but yeah. One difficult part about this is that um, these enemies, uh, the groups of four, will respawn as soon as you kill them all and collect their hearts. So you have to try and, while 50 is a pretty safe number, um, you have to try and kill them uh, so that you can collect their hearts immediately after. And uh, you can only go so high on the screen, so if an enemy is too high when you kill it, you, you just have to wait for the heart to either despawn or fly off screen. It is a lot more difficult if you come in with less strength. I don't know how much health these heart, these uh, enemies have, but uh, right now uh, Jarf's got three strengths, so he's one-shotting everything except for those green statue things, which we don't want to see again. But I mean, I think he's probably already there even, so. the purple floor it means we know we're there. <laughs> and here's the final boss, Medusa, which Pitt has strived to defeat. Um, Hardest one yet? Yeah. <laughs> using his left hand. Not even looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, no, well, time, it'll be time when he goes off screen. Okay. Have any as pauses? <laughs> Yeah, so after three really difficult bosses, this is what Medusa has in store for us. And it'll be in a minute. You got it. Time. That's it, time. 30, 49. All right. Good stuff. All right. Thank you, Pet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, as. as a tribute to your uh, hard adventure. Palutena is really thankful, and so she gives you a farmer's hat and sickle. <laughs> on the uh, on the Japanese version, the worst ending, she actually turns you into one of the enemies. That's what you get. Yeah. 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 The enemies depend on certain like. St statistic factors that are tracked by the game, like the number of hearts you have and whether you got all three special weapons. And uh, depending on how many of those you've fulfilled, you get like a better transformation by Palutena. You can become like a super strong warrior and like get to kiss her or something, or she kisses you if you get like the best ending, I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I think we're all set, right? Yeah. Yep. Well done, Jordan. Streamers. Streamers.
All right, important announcement to make. Uh, the website, gamesdonequick.com, will come back up gradually around the world as the site's URL is broadcast. DNS entry.